Hey, it's Joel, and the desk is an absolute mess. I'm really sorry about that, but I've got some hardware, some printed things. I've done something, and let me meet you on the floor. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd sponsored by Matter Hackers. Unfortunately, you see a predicament right here. This is all a bunch of filament, and it extends a little bit that way as well. The problem is those sweet, sweet shelves that are usually behind me, when I'm filming at my, my desk here and I've got all those printed parts and models behind me, that's where all this filament was. And it didn't even really fit there anyway. But now that it's on the floor, it's a mess. And instead of having filament on the floor, I should put it up here so that I could put a desk right here or something, some way to put more machines here. So I did a thing. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, look. Look right here. So earlier, uh, I, just as a test, I had to clean off the wall. So I took down my, my caffeine molecule and I printed these brackets. They're just in PLA. In fact, they look like this. And I designed them in Fusion 360 and I thought, what is the easiest and most simple bracket I could design to incorporate filament shelves? Here's the idea. I've got some one by two, and it was by 12 lumber, and I got it at Home Depot. Originally, I thought I should use doweling. A lot of people use doweling, but dowel was 250 to three bucks per linear foot. What? These were originally 12 feet long, and each one cost me $7.50 US. So the thinking was, well, why couldn't I just use these? And then why couldn't I just make a bracket that fit one by two lumber like that? And then why couldn't I attach it to the wall to put filament on top of? Like so. Yeah? Okay, that fits. But will it hold filament? Well, here, you know, hold on. So I got this uh, crane scale, crane scale. Here, I'll zoom in a bit. So with this crane scale, uh, it's, it's a, it measures this, so it measures how many pounds I can pull down on this. And if we put it right here, I'm gonna turn it on, and if I put it right here, and I pull down, I've got more than 21 pounds of force pulling down right here, more than 20 pounds. And the way I designed these was so that the force wasn't just on the front, it's on the back, but it's even because the spools sit in the middle and so it can pull down right here. So if the front can hold more than 21 pounds of force, the back could probably hold more than 21 pounds of force. And if we take a look at filament, normal filament, like, you know, this roll of Matter Hackers Pro Series PLA or this spool of Proto Pasta, just like that, it'll fit just like that and there's enough room behind the spool so that it's not touching the wall. But Joel, you say, what about, what about boxed filament? Well, look, here are three boxes of eSun filament that I got when Lulzbot had them for sale. The boxes themselves fit just fine because the boxes sit across these two pieces of lumber, meaning the flat surface is there for the box to sit on. Oh, but Joel, what about, what about these spools? What about these giant spools, these five kilogram spools? Well, do they fit? Yes, yes they do. The spool fits across the two pieces of lumber and the midpoint of the spool is behind this front piece of lumber, so it's not gonna tip over. Not gonna tip over, not at all. These are fine, these spools are fine. The goal now is to actually extend this a uh, hundred inches. I've got lumber because uh, I cut off a hundred inches and so these were the leftovers from the two 12 feet sections. And then all of this filament down here can now go on the wall. And for these here, uh, I've got some in PLA I've got some in Matter Hacker's Nylon X. Uh, I've got some in Protopasta HTPLA, and I'm gonna get some in PETG just to see what goes on with the brackets over time. Also, I printed some extra ones so we can break them. Oh, join me back over here. 
Normally, when I'm working with drywall or woods or stuff, I like uh, rough threads and I like a good drywall screw. Looks like that. Looks like that right there. That's a drywall screw. And I mean, I have, I have plenty of these. Drywall screw, inch and a half is generally what I like because you give about a half inch for the sheetrock which means that uh, whatever you're attaching, as long as the attachment point isn't too thick, you're gonna have three quarter an inch or more of the screw buried into the lumber, into the studs. That's a good thing. But the problem is, especially with 3D printing, here, look at this. Well, it's got a chamfer on it. <laughs> I don't know what the right term is, but it's got uh, this, this angled bit right here. And because these were printed in this orientation and the layer lines themselves, they go, they go in this direction. Uh, putting this screw into here is actually going to make this angle dig in and instead of holding the piece, it's going to pull the piece apart. That screw will attempt to delaminate the layers, which isn't good. So what I did is I went with this. It's called SPAX. And it's multi-purpose construction screws with a T-Star Plus drive. Most importantly, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a wafer head. It's got a wafer head. So here, let's pull one of those out. So you can see, here's the screw that is a drywall screw, and there is the one with the wafer head. What I did uh, when I designed this bracket in Fusion 360, I used my digital calipers and I measured the threading, and then on the inside where the hole is, I put a little chamfer. Because while this does have a wafer head, it also has a slight bevel to it, which means that uh, it will dig in just, just a little bit. But that's where that chamfer comes into play because it sits right in there. Now that we've got some filament over there, we've got two of the brackets up. I think what we should do is install the rest. So US building code says a wall stud 16 inches on center. I've got a stud finder right here. It found one. Hashtag dad joke. That is an ultimate dad joke. But with the stud finder, I found the studs. I actually built that wall over there. We'll be able to find 16 inches on center. And because I've got 100 inches of timber that I want, that means six sections, which means I'm going to need seven, seven brackets. So I've got two up there right now. I'm gonna need five more. Um, one, two, three, four, five. There we go, five more brackets, plus the two up there, that'll make seven, and I'll be able to get the first 100 inches. And uh, I know that six inches on center, or 16 inches on center, six sections, it's gonna be 96 inches, but that'll give me two inches of timber on either side as a overhang of lumber. Oh, this is a pretty ambitious project for me and for 3D printing in general because, well, like this is Nylon X. This is Nylon X right here. We already saw that the PLA can hold, PLA is stiff. Is the nylon going to give too much? I don't know the answer to that. So the thinking behind this bracket is as such. Here is a bracket and putting force here or here, it pushes down on this and then this is held here. So this force here, I believe pushes, it's, it's kind of wanting to bring this out like this. So I've got two screw holes up top, which will hold it. And then if the force is uniform across here, it'll push down. It should just work. Here's the nylon X one, look at that. That's a good looking bracket right there. I think it's time. Let's get those five more up. Let's get the 100 inch pieces of timber, lumber, limber, tumber. Let's get the limber tumber up there and then let's stack a bunch of filament, see how much of the pile is off the floor and then finally decide on how many more rows we need. Oh, Sean, give me a time lapse. That has to stay there because Lots of stuff is plugged in, but the shelves can go under it. Rather than finding every stud, I can just measure 16 inches on center. Should work. That's good stuff. going quicker than I thought.
There we go. We got seven up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me go get the lumber. What are the odds of it being level? Let's check. Place your bets now. Hey, that's level. And that's level. That's fantastic. So one of the things I could do, I could put, uh, I could tap each of these with a screw to hold them in place, but I don't think they're going anywhere. So I'm not gonna do it. Let's throw some filament up there, shall we? I'm just gonna start on the left. Oh wait, you know what, you know what? Dang it, I forgot about these spools. Oh boy, I've got a whole row up there right now and it doesn't even look like I've dented it. Not one bit. Well, let's, let's go back over to the desk for a second so we can figure out what to do next. We're at a point now in the project where it looks great. It held the filament just fine. What we need to do now though, we need to go get more lumber and I definitely need to print out more of these. This one just came off the print bed. Look at, this is from the, the, the Lulzbot Test 6 with the more Struder. It's essentially solid plastic, you know, the way that that goes. But, you know, it's worth printing a couple of these and then seeing how strong they are. So this is the Protopasta HTPLA. This is uh, Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. And there is a Nylon X one just printing now. I got a lot more that I need to print because I'm gonna need a lot more rolls of filament up in the sky. Day two. Good morning, day two. Let's get it done today, right? Yesterday we got one shelf done. Let's get the rest of them done. So here's what's happened since I saw you last time. I printed out more, a lot more brackets. Each bracket takes roughly two hours to print, two hours, 10 minutes, something like that. But this one only takes like an hour. This is printed on the Lulzbot Morstruder. And if you look at it, it's very sturdy. It's very tough. It's nearly pure plastic, which means it's gonna work phenomenally well. I don't know if I want it on this wall though. Uh, I'm, I might try to test it in another application or I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll make it work. I measured and I'm going to have three rows, which means I need 14 more. So I've got three here plus four is seven plus three is 10, 11, 12. I've got four more printing. Uh, I set aside these as tests because I know we wanted to do some tests with the crane scale and I wanted to set these aside because I know that these will probably break. Uh, I am printing some in PETG. People were curious on my Patreon about, about PETG as a material. I don't know how well it would perform versus the Nylon X, the carbon fiber nylon. Uh, I don't know how well any of this is gonna perform against the solid, <laughs> the solid plastic from the Morse Truder, but it's gonna be a really, really good day. We're gonna, I measured and uh, essentially it's, it's this. So if the top shelf is right here, then the bottom shelf will start right there. It needs to be a little bit taller than a spool just so it can move in and out. Let's get that measurement. If we measure across the center, it's uh, seven and seven eighths. So I could do, what if I did nine inches? Nine inches would be good and that would cover most spools and that would still leave room for, well, you know what? Let's check the boxes. What about the boxes? For example, here's, uh, here's this box right here. So seven and 15 sixteenths, seven and 15 sixteenths. So it's not even eight. So I think nine inches then is perfect. That's, that's what we'll aim for. Let's get started. One thing you have to watch out for is uh, when printing, you print like this. Sometimes because the filament on the first layer is squished down, you can use something like this deburring tool and uh, you run along the side and it just takes off that little bit of that filament that kicks out on the bottom layer. That way, the edge that goes against the wall is flat-ish. It's as flat as the earth. Wow, it's getting really warm up here. Uh, I had to take a quick break because I'm sweating. The, the ceiling is literally right here. And when, uh, when lights are on and printers are going, it just, it gets warm. Listen, this went up. This went up really well. I've got the Nylon X right here. I've got some protopasta gradient here and over here. I've got the um, 
the more struted pieces that are just indestructible because they're solid plastic. I'm gonna rearrange the filament a little bit because if you look over here, this is almost at the end. This is at the end. This isn't that much. This isn't that much. So here's the idea. I'll put full rolls up, full rolls and boxes, bagged rolls, stuff like that. And then I can donate my, my half rolls to a local makerspace or something like that. But then I could film, right? I could film with some filament behind me. So I said I wanted nine inches. Did I do it? Oh, nine and a quarter. I'm gonna put some filament on there and see how it looks. There we go. Got some more filament in the sky. I think it looks good. Everything's holding. Now to make things even. So if I measure from the bottom of this piece to the top of this piece, I get four and an eighth. So all I need to do is make sure that measurements here are similar and we should have an even shelf. Let's get that third shelf up. What do you say? Well, we ran across a little problem right there. This, it's split, split, just like that. Um, PLA is brittle and I had the screw uh, in, no, how did I, well, I don't know. It just split the way it was going. So thankfully we printed more right over here and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw this one away. But that's the beauty of 3D printing too. If you run across a piece that you've made that breaks, then you just make another. Looks like there's something in the wall there. So as the screw was trying to go in, it just uh, it didn't go in any further. And as it's continued to try to thread, it caused the PLA to bow out and break. It didn't happen on that one, but I did have to put the screw at a cattywampus angle. It caught some of the wood in the back, but maybe there's a plate on the wood or, well, I don't know. So let's move on to the next one. It looks to be sturdy. It's not what I'm worried about. I guess we'll find out. Here we go, I've got the PETG bracket. So this will be the last one we install, but well. Uh, I was printing this on my Prusa i3 Mark II, which I have a BuildTech flexible, removable build plate. And on top of the BuildTech spring steel, I've got a GeckoTech Easy Stick hot. And as soon as it was done, I, I, I peeled this PETG off. And I don't know if you can tell, but up here, <laughs> and right here, it looks like it removed part of that Easy Stick surface. So I don't know if I was supposed to let that cool down first or not. Oops, I've got another one going just because I'll need one for the strength tests. And I guess we'll see if it survives the next print, I guess. Uh, oh, let's see if it fits. It's great. PTG seems like a worthy material to use, uh, nice and stiff. And if, and if the whole thing is, I mean, it seems to wanna hold it. It bends a little in the middle right here, which is fine, but it's rigid, rigid enough. Let's install it. Oh boy, well, We've got it all installed and I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks amazing here. I mean, look at this, look what we were able to do. We were able to make brackets using materials that we can use additive manufacturing to, to produce parts from. That's just, it blows my mind. Each of these brackets essentially takes about two hours to print. The PETG one on the Prusa Mark II did take three because of settings, but that's not bad. That's not bad at all. We've got. 21 brackets up on the wall. We've got more to test. Oh, and look at this. This is the Garolite print bed on the, on the uh, Pulse XE. And this is a Nylon X print. There we go. So now, because we had to replace that Nylon X one, now we have our test prints. Awesome. And a PETG one is printing right now. So we have the Nylon X, we have the nearly pure plastic, we have the Protopasta HTPLA, we've got the Matter Hackers uh, build series PLA. I hope this was useful and I hope this inspires you to, well, to just make and create and to solve problems using digital fabrication methods. I mean, sure, when you, when you think about it, I could have made these brackets out of wood or metals or whatever, but I chose 3D printing because 3D printing is, well, it's the namesake of the channel, but it's something I, I know how to do. The bracket itself in Fusion 360 was really easy to model. I hope I've given you enough reference photos and video images where you could create your own, but if you don't want to and you just wanna download it, it'll be $2 at Gumroad and the description will contain the link to it. This is one by two timber, lumber, limber tumber. This is one by two material. I bought it in 12 foot lengths and it was $7.50-ish at Home Depot for that length. And the reason I went with 
this instead of dowel is because dowel was 250 to 350 per linear foot. And so at 12 feet, that would have been, well, it would have been a lot of money compared to what I spent in the entirety of this. Plus having the flat lumber, I think it gives it a certain look. It looks amazing. I think that being able to have this flat surface right here, I think this will really help. Plus let's say, let's say down the line, I had some printers here and I wanted to use this material. Then what if I had something that attached to the front and the material could just sit here on a hanger and then spool off to the printer. And then when it's done, I could just put it back. And so the possibilities are endless. And of course, that thing that I would make to do that would be made with 3D printing. Oh, and don't forget, at some point in the future, we'll have a video where we can use this crane scale to measure the uh, forces applied on these brackets and see when they break. Uh, my money is on this solid plastic one surviving quite a ways. Really curious about the nylon X. I'm really curious to see if the carbon fiber nylon can withstand a lot of force. I think that what's important is to, is to realize how minimal this bracket really is. I could have put a stringer here and a stringer here and it just, I could have built it out more, but I didn't, I wanted minimal. I think that's what we got. So we ran out of time, of course, to do it in this video but we'll do it in another one, promise. Look, thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, you are awesome. A big thanks to everybody that subscribes and rings that bell. Don't forget, you can support me in various ways with links down in the description, but beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.